So this executive order is going to go down as one of the more important events in the history of American health care reform. What President Trump is demanding is that hospitals post information based on their negotiated rates so that we and others have the information to shop and basically drive greater efficiency in the health care system, but also that we require insurance companies to provide patients with information about list price, negotiated discounts, and what their expected out-of-pocket would be before they get services. And then we're also going to publish claims data, de-identified patient, uh, patient safety protected claims data from across the federal government that will be a rich pool of big data available to help systematic improvement of our health care system, but also creating consumer usable tools so patients can really shop. You know, it seems pretty straightforward, and I know it's been something that uh, industry experts have said for a long time would certainly help with pricing. Um, why is it so complicated? Why is it so difficult to get this information out there? Well, a couple of reasons, but most importantly, for decades, Democrats and Republicans have called for transparency of price and quality information. But the simple fact is the various special interests who are embedded in the system, they profit from the lack of transparency. They've got a good gig going here and they don't want to attend. And you're already hearing them, them screech about the, uh, the demands the president's making for this kind of patient empowerment. And it's going to be a tough fight, but the president and I are up for it. We're, we're going to take on those interests and make sure we empower patients so they can be in control of their own health care. I guess my, my message to those special interests would be um, the current status of a non-market-based uh, approach in health care is not going to continue. And we'll either end up with a single-payer government-run system in this country because people are just so fed up, or we can do things that will actually create a market for health care, create more affordability, create higher quality care with the patient in control at the center, treated like a person, not a number. And you're going to have to choose which side you want to be on there. You mentioned those who are screeching. Are you referring to the drug companies that are suing you because you're trying to make drug companies actually put their list prices for their drugs in the advertisements that are out there? Well, as you know, on July 9th, the president's uh, regulation requiring that uh, pharmaceutical companies put in their TV ads their list price takes effect. So that'll be a very important day for transparency. But also just insurers, hospitals, everybody on the executive order yesterday, uh, they're expressing uh, their opposition to transparency of price and quality information. Now, I hope they'll come along because I think they're going to see that their customers, the patient, needs this information. They need it in a usable format and they should be supportive of an empowered customer, an empowered patient. I, I never think it's a good look for a, a drug company to say, we don't want to be telling you our list prices, but they are suing you, saying that this is part of their First Amendment rights. What do you think happens with that lawsuit? Well, I don't want to comment on that particular piece of litigation, but uh, we're very committed to this regulation. It takes effect on July 9th, and starting that day, the American people are going to have very transparent information about the list prices of their drugs. and. We've got a proposal through uh, what we call the rebate rule to actually empower patients so they'll even know what the negotiated discounts are on their drugs. And they'll get the benefit of those negotiated discounts every single time they walk into the pharmacy. So a lot of changes in terms of transparency, both of list price and negotiated price throughout our health care system. We're going to create a real market for health care that puts the patient at the center, lets them drive towards higher quality and lower cost in the system. Um, you know, sometimes one of the reactions that you hear, that you'll hear, is uh, the special interests say, oh, who's going to shop for health care? Well, first, you can't shop right now because even mm -hmm. I, as secretary, can't get this information. That's why right. we have to make that available. But 70% of inpatient services at hospitals are shoppable. 93% of outpatient services at hospitals are shoppable. So we just have to empower with information. We'll create a market here. Have the hospitals complained about this latest regulation? Well, they have about the executive order. Now, we still have to put out the regulation. It'll be done through notice and comment rulemaking, and we'll seek input, and we'll, seek, we'll consider a range of options in terms of the level of transparency of negotiated rates and information and how to make that machine-readable and consumer-accessible for, for patients. Um, but uh, I'd, I'd say you can work with us or you can fight us on this, but we're standing up for the American patient. So a year from now, you think I'll be able to say I, I need to get a mammogram. I should be able to see very clearly just by going on Google or some app and saying, what's the best price? Is it going to be at my doctor's office? Is it going to be one at one of seven hospitals near me? Absolutely. And, you know, there's wide variability of pricing, as you said, for a diagnostic service among providers in the same area. 
You know what's really going to be interesting? There's wide variability even at the same provider of the same service, and there's not much excuse Why? for that. Just it's because just, of if you're insured, if you're not insured, if you... Exactly, and sometimes what you find, I and mean, some of the data that we've been looking at shows that if you're willing to pay cash for services, the discounts are actually sometimes radically better than what the insurance companies are able to negotiate with hospitals. It's because of these provisions and contracts. They're, they're sometimes called all facilities provisions. It's a take it or leave it. If you want to interact with this massive hospital system, you have to take every single facility that we have, no matter where it's located. But also, you can't pick and choose. You can't say, hey, you're really good at hip replacements, so you're going to be in network for hip replacement, but you're lousy at heart transplants, and so you're out of network for that. You've got to take the whole kit and caboodle or nothing. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's, uh, that really impacts bargaining power. And there's some legislative proposals that Chairman Lamar Alexander is working on. Um, and this kind of transparency, I think that's why some people are afraid of the transparency the president's going to require is they, people may find out that uh, some of these uh, vaunted negotiators may not be doing that great of a job negotiating. You know, the, the hospitals have gotten a lot bigger in recent years. Uh, the health care, uh, health insurance companies have gotten bigger. They've all bought uh, pharmacy benefits managers. There's all these different teamings up, e even in some cases with the pharmacies, uh, thinking of CVS in particular with these situations. But all of these guys have tried to get bigger and bigger because they say it's the only way they compete can compete. What's going to happen to them when regulations kind of strip back a lot of that? Is it, is it not going to be a profitable sector, or are there going to be just some winners and some losers? Oh, there's, uh, there's a lot of profit being made in health care, so I'm not really crying for them. Uh, I'm concerned about horizontal and vertical integration, and we've really got to scrutinize those, those deals, those acquisitions very carefully. Um, but I don't know how price transparency and quality transparency is just not the best thing you could imagine for a marketplace or for consumers and for competition. So yeah. um, I think we, we're, we're really shaking up the entire system of health care by, by providing this kind of information, enabling a real, for the first time ever, a real market for health care. Look at LASIK eye surgery. It's, you know, it's one example, but it's a case where every year price goes down, quality goes up. Why? Because you don't have pay payers and insurers in the middle. You've got transparent price and quality information of people paying out of pocket for those services. It's an actual market, and it works. Yeah. It can work in healthcare.